Okay, so now we've seen the structure of the model. Let's dive in uh, and look at what's going on on the labor and product market. So as um, we saw, we'll have matching on the labor market, matching on the product market. So here, what I'm going to show you is that uh, the structure of the two markets is going to be perfectly symmetric. Um, and furthermore, it's going to be symmetric to the structure of the product market in the basic model. Um, so just want to show you how that works and also introduce a uh, notation. So let's start with the product market just because that's easier. The product market will be exactly the same as in the, as in the basic model. So what, what would we have uh, on the product market? So uh, we'll have households. Uh, households are going to do, uh, you know, in aggregate, uh, carry V visits. And so these visits are going to be necessary to shops, you know, to be able to buy uh, services, so we'll have this, we'll have firms. They are going to provide in aggregate K services. So you can think of this as a, as a capacity of all the firm. And of course, not all these services are going to be uh, sold as usual. Uh, then we'll have a matching function. that determines the number of trades. Uh, and so the number of trades, as usual, uh, we denote it by Y. This is the number of trades on the product market. We'll have a matching function M that takes uh, as given K, as an argument K, the number of services that are available. and V is the number of visits. And uh, we're going to use the same CES form as before. So with the CES, uh, so CES constant elasticity of substitution matching function. Again, because here it has a nice properties and in particular it keeps our trading probabilities between zero and one. So Y it's going to be K plus V minus gamma plus V minus gamma minus one over gamma. And um, here's the parameter gamma strictly positive. It's going to govern the elasticity of substitution uh, between uh, the two inputs in the matching function, the services that are available for sale and the number of visits. Uh, so we'll have this. And then another thing that we'll have that's going to be the same is that, of course, visits are not going to be free. Uh, so we'll assume that each visit costs rho strictly positive services. So if you're a household and you want to, as we've seen, you know, you want to perform the visit, you've got to purchase an additional row times V, uh, row times V services. Okay, so these are the, uh, these are the notation. So everything's the same as before. So now let's look at, uh, let's look at our labor market and you'll see the labor market is going to be completely symmetric here. So to start, uh, firms they are going to post the hat vacancies on the labor market to be able to recruit workers. Uh, so then, uh, yes, so then households, well, we can say, uh, We know that they are going to be their age. Uh, 
workers in the labor force, so in the aggregate. So these are workers uh, you know, that are part of the households and that are willing to work and ready to work at the current time and just looking for a job. So these eight workers in the labor force, they are the workers that are part of the labor market and trying to get a job. Uh, okay, so then we have a, again the same a matching function. So the matching function is going to determine the number of hires. So here's the number of hires, we'll call it L, number of people who are employed uh, after the matching process. That's going to be a matching function which I'll call M hat uh, of H. H, the size of the labor force. So here, this is, uh, they are all, of course, they are all initially unemployed. And that's why all these workers that are in the labor force here, they are initially unemployed looking to get a job. Uh, and then V hat, number of vacancies. And we're going to use a CS matching function as well on the labor market. So we'll have L, it's going to be H, number of workers looking for a job, minus gamma hat, plus V hat, minus gamma hat, minus one over gamma hat. And this gamma hat parameter is strictly positive and it captures the elasticity of substitution between um, workers and vacancies in matching here. Um, and last thing is that exactly as on the product market where each visit consider the number of services. Here, each vacancy on the uh, labor market requires row hat uh, workers, uh, recruiters. So if you want to post a vacancy, you've got to commit row hat recruiters to um, you know, to look after, uh, to look after the vacancy, take care of the vacancy, you know, that is advertise it, write it up, interview uh, potential applicants, look at the CV of potential applicants, uh, and so on and so forth. So you need role recruiters uh, for each vacancy that you post. So that's going to be exactly like on um, the product market. So, um, Given the symmetry, you know, we can introduce, you know, we saw that the product uh, market tightness was a key variable to understand, you know, what was going on in the product market, but given the symmetry, here we can also introduce a labor market tightness that will also be a key variable to understand what's going on in the labor market. So here we can, uh, we can introduce our market um, tightnesses. And as you can imagine, they are going to play a central role in the model. So uh, market tightnesses. So we we'll have a product market tightness. So this is the same as in our basic model. We'll denote it X as before. It's going to be the number of visits divided by the capacity. Um, but then exactly symmetrically, we can introduce a labor market tightness. And here again, we use standard notation. Labor market tightness is usually denoted by theta. And it's going to be the number of vacancies, which we denote V hat, divided by the number of people who are looking for a job. And here it's just H, the size of the labor force, because here we have just a one period model. So all workers start uh, initially unemployed. So these are our two market tightnesses. Okay. And um, these market tightnesses, of course, they are key, as we know, because they are going to determine all the trading probabilities. And so we can also introduce um, that. So 
So we'll have uh, a buying probability on, uh, so of course, buying probability on the uh, product market. So buying probability is the probability that a visit is successful. And as before, we'll call it Q of X, we'll have a selling probability that the probability that the service is actually sold. As before, we'll call it F of X. And you know, this probability Q of X, F of X, they're the same as the one that we had computed before. We can get them from the matching function and they have the same properties, you know, so the selling probability is increasing the product market tightness, the buying probability is decreasing the product market tightness. Um, all of this result from uh, the basic model hold here. So this is for what's going on on the product market. And then uh, we'll have exactly the same concept on the uh, labor market. So we'll have a uh, so we'll have a job finding probability. And this will denote it by symmetry f hat hat to denote that we're on the labor market now, and it's going to be a function of labor market tightness. And then uh, we'll have a recruiting probability, which is a probability that uh, the probability that a vacancy is actually successful, and so we'll denote it q hat had again to flag that we're on the labor market it's going to be a function of theta um, and you know given that the matching function have exactly the same form on the two markets uh, these probabilities will you know they're exactly uh, they'll have exactly the same property on the product market labor market so job funding probability will be increasing in theta recruiting probability will be decreasing in theta and they'll have exactly the same expression uh, so you know, for completeness, we can take we can uh, co compute them here. Uh, so on the product market, we've already done it, so we're not going to repeat it. On the labor market, we can do it just to show uh, just to show how these things uh, work out. So for instance, F hat of theta, it's a job finding probability. So it's the number of people who find a job, which is L divided by the number of people who are looking for a job, which is H. And then L, we know that it's given by our matching function, which is H minus gamma hat plus V hat minus gamma hat minus one over gamma hat. Okay, and this is all divided by H. Okay, but then the key thing is that our, our matching function here is a CS matching function, because it has constant return to scale. So we know that we can just bring the H inside and divide each of the argument by H. And so the H that we have here will be divided by H, and then V hat that we have here will be divided by H. But H divided by H, that's just one. V hat divided by H, that's just a labor market tightness. And so here, thanks to the constant return to scale assumption, we can then simplify this to one plus theta minus gamma hat to the power of minus one over gamma hat. So for instance, that's how you can compute uh, the job finding probability. And this is you know, exactly the same expression as we had on the product market, except that gamma will replace gamma hat and x, the product market tightness, will replace theta. And you can see that this is a strictly increasing function of theta, and it's always, uh, it's always between zero and one. So we're all, uh, we're all good. And you, know, you could do exactly the same for, uh, for q hat as well. Uh, of theta. So Q of theta is a recruiting probability, the probability that a vacancy we had is, uh, sorry, it's a probability that a vacancy is actually leads to a recruitment. So the number of people who are recruited is L, the number of vacancies trying to recruit workers is V hat. So here we can do exactly the same. It's H minus gamma hat plus V hat minus gamma hat minus one over gamma hat divided by v hat. Again, constant returns. 
So the two V hats, we know that they are going to be uh, equal to one. And then inside we'll have a H divided by V hat, and this is just one over theta. So if you want, it's going to be theta gamma hat, which is one over theta minus gamma hat, so it's theta gamma hat plus one. And here again, so you have a, now you find it's the same expression that we had for qx, now you get it for q hat of theta. And here you get a decreasing function of tightness. So when the labor market is very tight, it's easy for workers to find job. It's hard for firms to recruit workers. You know, vacancies tend to have a low yield. The recruiting probability is low, which is, for instance, what we see now uh, in the aftermath of the pandemic, a very tight labor market. Um, when the labor market is very uh, slack, so the labor market tightness is low. Say, for instance, what happened uh, and, you know, uh, during the Great Recession or Great Depression, then it's very hard for workers to find job. F hat of theta is low, but it's very easy for firms to recruit workers. So recruiting probability is very high. Q hat of theta is very high. That's what you get here.